needless to say, everyone's having a lot of fun with Kulf to Roth and hi, fellow hunters. But for me, my favorite part, I think, is one not talked about, well, that much at all, and that is the map itself, the Caverns of El Dorado, which I think genuinely might be in contention for my favorite environment just in Monster Hunter, and I think it's a crying shame that it's being used for just one monster on a rotating event, like it's just eh. And look, granted there have been signature maps for other monsters before, this isn't a new thing, but never has there been such scale, detail, and just well-craftedness gone into a monster's signature arena. And I think there is genuine merit for it both being used and expanded and fleshed out into a full map, and for that actually happening. You see, the Governs of El Dorado. I mean, it's breathtaking. From the wildlife to the light streaming in from the openings above, illuminating Monster Hunter's take on the fabled city, the gold lining the rock everywhere, reflecting it in this dazzling, almost magical feel, like you will have uncovered something thought to not exist at all, and it's... Ah, oh, it stirs something deep inside me. And let's not beat around the golden bush here. I think we can all agree it would be beyond awesome to fight other large monsters in this just masterpiece of a map. So, how would I do it? Well, imagine it stays as a rotating event, but what rotates is not the Siege of Kul Roth, but the accessibility of the Caverns of El Dorado. And each time you go back down there, the siege equipment has been removed because resources are important to the commission. It was such a big deal when we wasted loads of them on Zoro the first time without stopping him. So they would have retrieved them, so the sieges would be gone. The fight with Kul Turoth would have already happened in the past. So we have sent her packing, we've stolen her shit, cut off her horns, and basically abused an old dragon. And uh, we have, well, the caverns post-siege. The rock walls broke in area one so movement is less restrictive maybe some wedge beetles have left thanks to the commotion so it's less mobile in the air so you can't take advantage of other monsters you could face there the golden walls have all been melted through so everything is accessible the tunnels are quieter creatures no longer seeing Cove to Roth roving round she's licking her wounds in her nest maybe for years until she's active again that suddenly gives way to well other things emerging and not just emerging now that the caverns have been discovered like this there's nothing to stop other existing monsters from finding their way there from flying ones descending from the beautiful skylights above to tunneling ones finding their way in it's more than likely located twixt the elders recess and the coral uh, rotten veil vale duo in the center which means everything kind of round it is fair game and it would be easy to say there's no other large monsters here because of Kulf Taroth, she was marking her territory, nobody wanted to fuck with an Elder Dragon, and that could be fair enough, but now that we have beaten her back, well, it's a load of space and potential resource up for the taking, and there's no doubt that other monsters would move in to take advantage of this. So, Something like a Oregon or a Dodo Gamma just finding its way here on its quest to munch minerals and rock? That's not exactly crazy, is it? Maybe even a stray Odogeron has found its way here and thinks it makes a fantastic little den. But we'll get more on the creature's front later on. We have to, well, have the viability of the map. So yeah, we've beat Kulturoth back and she is out of the picture. I'm watching you always watch. So, the area itself then, area one, initially I was like, ah, this kind of only works for Clove, right? But thinking about it, the pathways that she takes, even the slightly elevated bits, all have enough space at least to rival the special arena, and we're fine to fight all manner of creatures there. And you could put some certainly agile foes that are using the elevation, the columns, the rock, leaping between them, a la Oda, a la Toby, and you could actually have a really interesting multi-layered fight that actually kind of spans the cavern. Seeing something swift sprinting down the pathways that Kulv used to drag her down is actually really cool. Even 
than just the locating the monster process would be a lot of fun in Area 1 just because of how it's done. Hell, even going up to the upper areas, there's a whole other section with lots of things to mine, there's loads of resources to gather, and there's already the infrastructure here for an actual map you can just go on an expedition to. Because let's be honest here, now that we have discovered this golden cavern of untapped wealth and potential, you're saying we're not just going to send exploration expedition parties here to see what's what after we've driven off the person that previously called, I say person, the dragon that previously called it home? Of course we are. It'd be crazy not to. It's the commission. We're going to explore this almost unbelievable discovery of a location. And there's no way that something this expansive, a tunnel system of such a gargantuan size that Kulv Tarov can be supported here, can only be occupied by one large monster, right? What are the chances that there is literally no other things larger than a Gajalaka living in the entirety of the caverns of El Dorado? I think that would just be silly to believe. So what I find very interesting then, and as we move to area two, this is a huge area. You could fight damn near everything here. It's not as complex as others, because again, it was initially intended for Kulv, but the thing is, it's a big open space. The wedge beetles above letting you- Spider-Man! around are phenomenal and the thing is you see all of these corridors look at the corridors not where i know you're looking how dare you if we look at all of the corridors rotating round in what looks like the ruins of actual you know something proper you could end up adding a part where you could use this wedge beetle to get to an upper area and actually just walk the golden corridors around here. It looks like there is genuine stuff going on in this entire upper area. And think about this upper area, right? If we're going to have this as a new map, we can't just be completely unrealistic and be like, let's just throw all the new monsters, because that takes time and resources. But what could be reasonably done? Well, firstly... Go- Golden Rathian and Silver Rathalos, they have been staples of the series, and they are always big deals, impressive fights. Can you imagine being in this room? The cutscene introduction to them, you're exploring the cavern post Kulv, and Golden Rathian or Silver Rathalos descends slowly. Even when I'm speaking hypothetically! Golden Rathian or Silver Rathalos descends slowly from the skylight, the gold reflecting off their own shimmering scales as they come to claim this place as a fantastic nest. Because it would be, they can fly in and out freely, there's no other large monster competition that we know of, they can go on hunting trips, bring food back to their nest down here, it would thematically make sense, I mean, it would be a really cool way to introduce Lawise for the first time, a uh, golden and silver Rathalos and Rathian pair living in the new world. I, ah, oh, I just shudder to think about it. So, beyond adding just, well, them, you could obviously go for a full new monster if you want to get crazy, like the crabs that are here. Imagine a golden daimyo, 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 I've never said it out loud, actually, Hermitar. That would be amazing, maybe wearing the golden skull of a Kulv Taroth. I mean, they're always scaled up, right? So you could totally, like, ram horns on the back of a daimyo. That would be amazing, but obviously, that's just you know, fantasy. They're not just going to randomly start adding in the crab monsters, though I do dearly miss them. But I think this is the perfect chance for subspecies, for rare subspecies to arrive on rotation. And the thing is, it's still being a rotational map, but things change on it each time still keeps the specialness of it. So the wildlife in here is covered in gold. The gold in the air, the dust settles on them tints them gold and, uh, well, changes them slightly. The golden gajalaka, the wildlife. So, if you had a burrowing monster that loves to eat ore and rock, I don't know, Oregon? Go down here, imagine bright gold shimmering 
Uragon. Now, the thing is, there is an Uragon subspecies. The Crystal Beard Uragon. Come on, like, you could totally viably see a Crystal Beard Uragon living down here in the caverns, and imagine it rolling along the pathways that Kulv drags herself along during the fight. That would totally make sense. Even something like a Dodo Gamma, the beautiful one that hopefully you saw on the uh, thumbnail. It likes to munch on crystals and ore, and this place seems rich of both, it could crawl here, dust settles on it, the uh, bites it takes is the gold, so when it magmas them out, you get a mini version of the gold puddles that Culve herself was creating. Golden Dodo Gamma, maybe somehow leaner a little bit faster, maybe it can crawl up and down the elevated areas a little bit more. Hell, there's even these beautiful underground lakes, and as much as I'm loath to say it, we have obviously the Piscine Wyvern skeleton in game, Levisioth and Giratidos, so we could get Plessioth and his legendary hip check. <clears throat> Uh, but a golden Plesioth, how awesome would that be, jumping out the water and having a flop around and a fight? So, that is fantastic, right? Rare golden subspecies that have moved into the cavern every time we come here. They're only there for a limited time? Maybe, right? The golden subspecies don't even need new armor or weapons. Maybe hunting them, it's a fun little fight, a little bit of a bonus, comes with the event, but hunting them just lets you make proper golden versions of their armor. Same stats, right? But it's just goldenified and it looks awesome and gives you another option. Maybe shuffle around what stats on what piece to open up a little bit more options, but you don't need to go full new monster, full new sets of everything. You could keep it a lot chiller and just make it more of a cosmetic exploration reward as you hunt in this cavern. And the thing is, you could easily expand this to have a more underground lake area with the gold shimmering under the water, maybe have a little bit more lush and grass and plants growing around the underground lake, and do the classic secret underground forest part of uh, the map. That would be pretty damn special and would open up a load of options, but yeah, then we go deeper, of course, into the lava area, and this area I could totally see you fighting a Latrion in, right? Like, you could fight a Latrion across the whole thing, actually. He can do his thunder and ice phase in the tall area, too, then start doing his fire and dragon shenanigans in the Molten Area 3. I'm sure Altrion will get his actual own map, but I would totally be okay with fighting him in the ruins here. But this lava area, you could see loads of monsters that are viable to fight here. It, the Rathalos, the Uragan, all sorts of shenanigans like that. Basically, anything on the recess. You know what else I could see fighting down in the lava area? Lunastra. We know we're getting her. She's on the leaked list. Teostra, perhaps, and Lunastra as a pair have a nest deep in the lavery caverns, because, you know, that's where it would be safe and secure, and Lunastra is at home guarding the nest while Teostra hunts in the recess? Maybe that's why we've not seen Lunastra yet, but maybe they arrived as a pair. You could totally spin that. And honestly, I think this whole thing is definitely possible just because of how well so much of what we already have know we're getting, and the world itself just slots into here without a crazy amount of effort to just make it work. And then finally, we obviously have the uh, end room with all the gold everywhere, and yeah, this is very cool to Rafi, but it's just a big open space with lots of jumpables, and it looks pretty. You could totally fight whatever in here, right? So, you just need to expand it a little bit, do these kind of unique things, and you could properly have this moving through time, law-friendly caverns exploration, the commission thoroughly diving into its depths, discovering these rare rare oddities, because these golden versions of creatures wouldn't just be like common, they'd be a single member of the species that has come here, made itself home, and developed this golden sheen and slightly different behaviours and attacks to make use of it. Like, imagine Uragan's little golden explosions, that it would become golden, they'd be golden, I called them golden before actually introducing his explosions. Golden! I'm gonna leave that train wreck fucking in, Jesus Christ. His little balls! Uragan's little ball. Oh my god, it just- The train wreck blew up! <laughs>
Oregon's explosives would be gold. They'd make gold pools. That would be cool. That's what I was trying to say. Oh my god. I don't know. Maybe I'm just in a gold frenzy, but that's how I would like this map to function. I think there's plenty of room. I think it's plenty viable, and I don't know. It's a lot of assets to use for a single rotating event. It was probably, you know, being created a while, probably even before the game was released, but... Ah, I think there's a good chance that it will get used. There's even little tunnels that look like, obviously, they're too small for Kulf to Roth, but something could easily use them, right? They totally could. There's so many different areas on the map that look like they're almost artificially blocked off. Like, we might get it later. Like, on the actual map map itself, you can see a golden area that looks like Kulf to Roth's nest. Eventually, if we do, and I think it's likely we get to go there and finish her off, fully kill her, which, by the way, is is when I think we should get Kulf to Rough weapons. Not her relic weapons, but a follow-up where we go to her nest and finish her in an epic showdown is when we actually get her weapon weapon. She becomes almost a variant, like One-Eye Yangaruga, no horn Kulf to Roth, bitter and angry over the loss of her stash. She is furious and powerful. Hell, maybe even that's what makes her tempered. She survived this encounter with hunters, right? Hell, I would love a Kulf to Roth subspecies, Diamond. She collects mineral instead of metal. Someone also suggested a Mercury Kulf to Roth, a faster one that can poison you. Someone also suggested a Kula Yaku Kulf to Roth covered in Kula Yakus, which I, I think we all can agree would be the best thing ever made by mankind. But oh, I'd love your thoughts on this, guys. Would you like... I mean, obviously the answer is probably going to be yes, right? But would you like my interpretation of it, how I would do it? Because it really makes sense. The ecology down here is ripe for a whole... Well, new world. <laughs> hey, hey, ha <laughs> ha. Uh, but no, I wanted to make a video just going over my ideas and waxing lyrical about this awesome map, and I hope you did have fun with it. Maybe, hopefully, yeah. Either way, I'll see you all very soon. Like if you did, share it around if you enjoyed yourselves, and subscribe for more. A oh, good boy. Rage gaming with the video float. But that's all that's really relevant at the mo. But I'm still gonna leave this up so you patrons know that I love you even though the outro's no longer that kind of relevant. But the new one's being worked on and it's gonna be a truly badass song. And don't worry, I won't be doing any rapping on it. I'm gonna go now. Uh, this was shit.